The reason why I'm telling you is not to copy what he's doing, but I want you to learn from it on what people are doing and to profiteer from your fears of the marketplace. Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here. All right, so I wanna talk about market manipulation using social media. One of the biggest topics right now on the social media front is headliners, okay? Headliners as well as fake news. You've heard it before. I wanna talk about this because market manipulation is huge, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Now, here is an example on what I'm talking about to a point where I'll talk about people who understand this, okay, um, will profit from it and and also, some of the stuff that people do can be illegal, but the question is going to boil down is, do you know the game that people are playing against you, okay? I learned it in the stock market game, all right? There's a gentleman named of Jonathan Lebed, all right? Look him up, all right? He's considered the youngest, uh, uh, youngest person uh, indicted by SEC, which is a, a stands for Security Exchange Commission, all right, SEC. The youngest person who has been indicted by him, uh, indicted by the federal government for doing pump and dump scheme in uh, the stock market, all right? Now, he, um, at that time, um, he was pumping and dumping uh, penny stocks, all right, penny stocks. Um, and he's considered the youngest individual. Now, this is what he was doing, okay? So, the time that he got indicted, I want to say it was like 15 or 16 or something like that, right? Um, but he had a brokerage account. And at that time, the internet was kind of barely coming around, okay? I think he's like 30, he's, he's my age, I think, yeah. Um, so um, the internet was just coming around and, and uh, a lot of financial people, they went on Yahoo, okay? Where they call Yahoo Finances. So they went on Yahoo Finance and he went on there and he started asking questions. All right, and people would answer and things like that and give suggestions on stocks. So what Jonathan did was he got smart, okay, to a borderline, he got in, as I said, he got indicted by the SEC and had to pay a huge fine and he's considered a criminal. The reason why I'm telling you is not to copy what he's doing, but I want you to learn from it on what people are doing and to profiteer from your fears of the marketplace. Okay, so Jonathan went on to um, uh, went on to the Yahoo forum. He was around 14, 15, I believe, and he started noticing that hey, people are giving suggestions on stocks, and not only are they giving suggestion on stocks, but people would actually make buying decision from people that they didn't know from the internet, um, and uh, they would actually buy stocks. All right, and this is where it got interesting. And he said, ooh, how can I profit from this? So what he ended up doing was saying, okay, what, what uh, industry, when it comes to stocks, does the market go up and down the most, okay? Up and down the most. And he realized it's the penny stocks. All right, and not only penny stocks, but you don't because it's penny stocks, meaning it's a couple of cents. Okay, you don't need a whole heck of a lot of money to get started. Right, so what he ended up doing was buying uh, companies, okay, penny stocks, and then from there he would go on the Yahoo forums and he would social engineer a conversation on so uh, on social media. At that time, it was Yahoo forums, and I, even at that time, they didn't even call it social media. Okay, it was just called the internet. It was just called the forum and he would social engineer a conversation on Yahoo forums to suggest and to imply that hey this penny stock or a particular penny stock that he already owns is a great buy so he would social engineer the comments section on there and uh, have people buy into it and guess what guess what happened People bought the stocks, and he already owns the, you know, because it's penny shares, he owns tons of those, okay? And people bought it, and when that happened, it went up. And as it went up, guess what he did? He dumped them, all right? And then it came crashing back down, all right? And he kept on doing that over and over and over, and he made tons and tons of money, all right? Until the Security Exchange Commission, because that is illegal, it's pump and dump, all right? It's a pump and dump scheme, you're not supposed to do that, okay? Came in and indicted the guy. Uh, so he did get in trouble, all right? Now, why am I telling you this currently right now, okay? One 
is that particular person social engineered uh, the marketplace to profit from it, okay? Profit from it. Now, don't for a, even a split second believe that the powers that be is not going to manipulate the marketplace so they can, one, profit from that, okay? If you think that they're not gonna do that, you're kidding yourself, all right? So number one, understand it's called a market for a reason. You have the suckers, okay? And as the old cliche saying says, if you're at a poker table and you don't know who the sucker is, it's probably you, all right? So just know that a sucker always exists a sucker is born every minute, as they like to say. So the question is, how do you actually profit from it? But also at the same time, how do you protect yourself so you don't get suckered and you lose money? So it started dawning on me as we're going into this year, okay, is that, hey, there's line being drawn in the sand in the real estate market as well as the stock market. Why? Is because we're hitting all-time highs. Obviously, in the Dow Jones went over uh, 20,000, okay, and we have never hit that before. We're hovering around there. May actually uh, break another um, uh, break another uh, resistant level to maybe get to like 21,000 or so, all right, very shortly. Uh, but we're at record highs. As well as real estate, we have hit in certain areas 2007 levels, all right? Meaning that we're up here, okay, in terms of value, all right? So now the news media is starting to say, hey, either one, they're very bullish about the economy and says, hey, it's gonna go go to the stratosphere to a point where people in the stock market believe that, hey, it may go to 30,000. People in the real estate market says, hey, we still got 20 to 30% uh, percent in appreciation that it can go up to, all right? You have to start understanding market cycles. And I'm a huge believer on you have to understand technical analysis as well as fundamental analysis. And what that really means in layman terms is one, you gotta understand why the market moves a certain way. Now, understand the term market because it's called a market because the market goes up and down. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called a market because it goes up and down, it's called a market, all right? Someone's gonna be wrong, someone's going to be right, all right? And if you're in the real estate okay, business, and I think you are, I am in my case, okay, there's two train of thoughts on this. I'm gonna give you both train of thoughts, and then I'm gonna tie it into what Warren Buffett has been talking about, all right? There's something that you wanna pay attention to, the fourth, I wanna see the, say the fourth richest man, all right, by Forbes, all right, in this world has stated certain things publicly, the two, train of thoughts in the marketplace, and I'm gonna give you both, all right? And, and the reason why is it's really important to uh, understand this, okay? Is number one is on one side of the camp, people talk about the eight to 10 year real estate cycle, all right? Meaning that's very common where people say, hey, real estate goes into an eight to 10 year cycle, that you have the ups and down every eight to 10 years. And if you go by the eight to 10 year market cycle, then use, let's use the bottom for a second. If you use the bottom of 2008, 2009, 2010, maybe 2011, 2012, then you can start figuring out when the real bottom is, okay? Well, when you figure out what the bottom is, all right, then you can use the eight to 10 year uh, real estate cycle, add that and be like, oh, okay, if you add eight, eight years to, let's just say 2010, we're at 2018. Currently right now as I'm recording, this is 2017, okay? If you add the 10 years on that, then it will be what? 2020, okay? If you think the bottom was 2012, add 10 years, you're at 2022. If you had eight years, do the math on that, right? You're at 2020, okay? So, if that's the case, we only have a couple of years before we see another decline in the marketplace, all right? So that's one train of thought. So you're gonna hear more and more about that in uh, uh, the news, and you're gonna hear people talking about the eight to 10 year business cycle, okay? But what I want you to consider is something else on the flip side of the coin, okay? The counter perspective, and man, we're getting tons and tons of text in a group text, man, uh, is the, the 18 year uh, real estate cycle, all right? Now this was first published by Cato Institute, and it was actually talked about um, by uh, former Federal uh, uh, Reserve Chairman, uh, Ben Bernanke. He started talking about the 18 year uh, real estate cycle. Okay, um, and stating that, hey, you know, we got 18 years by looking at the history on, hey, we're gonna be a boom swing, okay? So if we take that number, okay, 18, and let's just say for easy sake of math, the bottom is 2010. Add 18 on that. Where are we? 20, 28. 20, 28. 
today is what, 2017. Okay, so that means we have almost 10 years until we see another decline, a huge decline like we saw in 2008. Will that happen? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, okay? But here's why social media is key when it comes to market manipulation. is because more and more people are getting educated in, in the sense of being more of a headline reader. And not only that, but they don't do their own research, right? So they're streaming through Facebook, see someone reading it, and they'll take it as fact, hence the term fake news, okay? So imagine if you just have the eight to 10 year business cycle stuff, right? running and running and running and you get brainwashed like oh my god we're gonna see a decline we're gonna see a decline we're gonna see a decline they're gonna see a decline they're gonna start hoarding money right they're not gonna buy they're gonna buy less okay they're not gonna invest as much because they're waiting for a bottom all right so that means if that correction really ha is going to happen very soon then we may see it much quicker that's number one okay but let's just say it's the other way right where they believe in the 18 year cycle then everyone's feeling good feeling good feeling good they're gonna be keep on investing 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 and will it make the downturn come a lot earlier because more people are feeling good you get what I'm trying to say and this is the first time ever that that mass scale I'm a firm believer that that people have more access to information the farm boy uh, in Central let's just call Central America okay I know it's not a correct term because when I say Central America it is really Central America like Latin Central America right uh, um, but I'm saying Central America like Ohio <laughs> okay and the farmland and let's just say they them right didn't have access to the information that we have now and they're making a decision in their mind on what they're going to do so as other influencers in the marketplace are getting a voice, what is that gonna do to the marketplace? And that's where it's really, really interesting for me to pay attention to that is because one, is it going to speed up, speed up the next decline or is it gonna prolong the actual boom cycle even more? And that, my friend, is gonna be the interesting part. And you know that it's important when, when social, how, the impact of social media can have. Because check this out, okay? Warren Buffett, as I said, the fourth or fifth uh, richest man in, uh, in the world, okay? In, on planet Earth, all right? In planet Earth. And here's a Snapple fact, okay? The top, uh, the top eight uh, individuals on the Forbes, okay? Richest people, okay? Controls 50% of all the wealth on this planet Earth. Controls 50% of it. They have it all. Okay? That's a Snapple fact, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so Warren Buffett put his house on the one in Laguna Beach for sale. Um, he's owned it since, I want to say, like the 70s or 60s, okay? Put it up for sale for $11 million uh, for sale. Uh, uh, for sale. All right? And and they asked him, why is he selling these? And he says, like, kind of like, yeah, well, it's the right time to sell. I've, I've lived here long enough, and I don't need anything like this. That's what he says. Okay? And for me, it's interesting. Because he's been selling a lot of his assets off, ladies and gentlemen. He sold off his, he sold off his uh, shares in what? Uh, Walmart, right? Sam Walton, right? Um, had tons and tons. So in January, he sold tons of those off, okay? Um, as well as now he's selling his personal home for $11 million. So someone like him has a responsibility that other people can't fathom. Meaning that if he says something, then the market can literally get shook up. Right, so he has to be very selective on what he talks about because he can't say, "Oh yeah, I think the market's gonna crash." No, so so he's very very optimistic of what he tells the news over and over. Like, hey, I believe in the uh, United States government; it's still good. And and his biggest uh, argument for the last, I want to say, he's been doing a lot more interviews. It's crazy, and he talks about um, how GDP per capita is gonna grow at a two percent rate. And he says that the United States growing at a GDP growth at two percent is still a good thing. So, final thought. Listen to what's happening in the marketplace, but also at the same time, pay attention to the people that are actually doing something because everyone has an opinion. An opinion is like everyone has it, okay? But understand and actually make plays because the best investors, the best entrepreneur, it doesn't matter if the market goes up, down, flat, sideways, or whatever it is, they're gonna make money either way. And Position yourself because if the market does decline, then you got to be able to capitalize it and you got to be able to get an uplay and you may be able to make a generation worth of wealth if you position yourself right. As well as if you're not positioned correctly and it does go to the 18 year business cycle and we still have a humongous uproar, okay, you may miss an opportunity and you don't want to do that as well. 
So that's what I got for you guys. This is Jeff Goga. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'll talk to you guys later on a different episode. Bye-bye.